So, public speaking. Very serious business. Uh, so much has been written about it. Um, a lot is common sense. There are some funny anecdotes and a lot is pure snake oil. I think we can boil the basics down to these three messages. The first, confidence in your message. The second, confidence in your delivery. And thirdly, the overall confidence that uh, whatever you're feeling inside comes from practice. Now, of course, that was a list of three, some magic number that seems to really resonate with people throughout the ages. And if you're doubting for a moment the supreme importance of confidence, just think about the House of Commons. Think about some of the absolute nonsense that public school boys can pass off as political speaking in that place. Which brings me, of course, to jokes. You don't need them. If they happen to come naturally, um, that's all well and good, but don't crowbar them into your remarks or you're in danger of coming across like an amateur stand-up comedian or an arrogant old Etonian. Some people um, constantly say that you should slow down when you're speaking. Uh, be much slower than you would be in natural conversation. I think there's something to that. It can calm you down and allow you to be better heard, especially outdoors. But there is a balance to be struck. And also, tempo, speed, just like your volume, um, th these are tools that you can use to make your remarks more interesting. And of course, you can also use pauses for emphasis. Now, of course, there's a there's a bit of a stereotype of the lefty speaker as both too loud and too long. So um, you know what I mean, the sort of uh, the sort of uh, shouty windbag, uh, and we don't want that. We don't want to fall into enemy hands and into these traps that make us too readily dismissed when we've got really important messages to get across. Also. Um, public speaking has changed a lot. Oratory has changed with the development of microphone technology in particular. We aren't standing at, at pit heads or in public squares anymore trying to be heard by hundreds or thousands of people without amplification. So I think that for listeners and for speakers, oratory's changed. Um, it's now much more intimate much more like broadcasting. Our audience have been brought up now on radio, TV and even the dreaded Zoom. So no need to, to shout, project or, or even gesticulate quite as much as in the past. Um, ultimately, I think you want to be as natural as possible. And that means that um, reading from notes or bullet points uh, as really prompts for your speech can be a lot easier than even reading a prepared text. If the precise words of your speech are incredibly important, think about speaking freely and recording it before you write it down. Because of course you find that uh, writing to speak and writing to read are, are really quite, quite different. Ultimately, you're telling a story. Human beings are storytelling creatures, maybe first and foremost. So, so concentrate on your story or that of others when you're getting your message across. That's possibly the best way to enhance our voice. If you're not nervous, there's something wrong with you if you do public speaking. Uh, I think everyone should be nervous because I think it shows some sort of respect for your audience. I'm, I'm nervous whenever I speak. Uh, and I think uh, that's natural. I agree with Shami about, no, I, I have done both. I have, uh, I, I normally use bullet pointed notes to myself. Um, I have occasionally had to do a, a written speech. I find it much harder to do a fully prepared written out speech because it's, I think it's less natural. Um, I think knowing your audience and knowing what what event you're speaking at. So I speak at, you know, if I speak in a, a fire service workplace in a fire station around a mess table talking to 25 people, 
actually uh, there is no t time for banging the table or anything like that. I, as much as anything else, I want to encourage them to tell me what they think. Uh, and that is very different to speaking to whatever 20, 30,000 people at the Durham Miners Gala. So I've got, I think you have to think about where you are speaking. Um, I think uh, I think that the point that Shami made about going on too long, I think there are, maybe I'm one of those guilty, but I think it, it is common uh, that people don't necessarily respect the, the, the need to be succinct. Uh, you see that at conferences, you know, in my union, we're very strict on the, the lighting system and people will be told to stop after the red light comes on. Uh, I have to say, sometimes you see in our movement people who don't uh, respect that. Well, it's a respect for the fact that other people have also got other things to say. So I think we should bear that in mind uh, as well. Um, I think uh, having something interesting to talk about is, is key. I, I learned to speak in the Labour Party Young Socialists. Um, and we did a lot of work about encouraging people who weren't trained at school necessarily to, about public speaking, but we, we encouraged people to do that and techniques. But it was actually also about making sure you knew what you were talking about. So reading, studying things. You know, I think our Labour parties, it's all very well going through minutes of meetings, but we also want to have political discussion where people are learning and debating with each other about uh, political uh, ideas and how, how we change things. So having uh, interesting things to discuss, I think, is also uh, central to, to, to making what we say um, important. It's, it's, the, it's the message that's more important than the, the delivery, but I think we, sh we, we do need to think about how we deliver messages. There's so well, many people at Labour Party meetings and in within Parliament, because a lot of them became MPs, who just talk for the sake of talking and they don't put a point across. There's no persuasion and it's just noise. And that's not what we want to see in our meeting because we want to take people on a journey and we want to create that culture where A, they feel confident to speak out and B, they're actually changing their minds about things because that's the whole point about political discussion. What was it like for you the first time you spoke? Did you feel nervous and how did you, how did you cope with that? I'm always nervous. I'm not a natural public speaker. And I remember when I did my first ever speech, it was getting ready for my selection meeting to become an MP. And I was there with a piece of paper and it was shaking. And I knew what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it, but it just didn't come out like that. And I sounded like a robot. So over the years, one of the things that helped me was I always, so sometimes I do bullet points if I feel completely comfortable about the subject and I'll just keep looking back to the bullet points and talk around them. But if I don't feel comfortable in the subject matter, what I'll do is I'll write out a speech. So I've got a, a rough draft of what it is I want to say. And then I'll highlight or do it in bold, the first line of every paragraph. So that as I'm reading it out, if I veer off, because I do this quite a lot, I'll veer off into a little stream of consciousness where I rant about something else. And then I'll forget where I am and, and I'll start to panic. So I can look back at my piece of paper then and look at the, the highlighted sections and go, oh, yeah, I was going to talk about, you know, cars next or whatever it is. And then I'll get myself back on track again. Um, and then another point about public speaking, um, and I, I should do this. And every time I do a speech, because my mum sits and watches Parliament TV like 24 hours a day and she always shouts at me. She says, Rebecca, you're talking too fast. You need to slow down. You need to lower your voice. And every time I think, right, next time, that's what I'm going to do. But it's so important to take people on a bit of a journey with your voice and I kind of when the great public speakers do this they go up and down mountains so they'll have little bits of their speech where they're really quiet and you'll be focusing on everything that they're saying and then they'll build up to a really really important political point and they'll say it and then they'll become quiet again and you really keep your attention focused on the speaker when they do that and that's a really good tip. So in your speech, think about the bits that you really want to be angry and powerful about and the bits that you really want to be quiet about. And then you'll keep the attention then rather than people switching off. And then the last point and the most important point is that when you're doing a speech, it could be the greatest speech in the world, but most of the time people forget what you've said. So the last sentence 
has to be the most profound and the most powerful. So whether it's getting a quote off the internet to bring everything together or saying something yourself about the key message that you want to put across, make sure that's your very, very last sentence. I think what I learned over the years is that when people are silent while you're speaking, it doesn't mean they disagree. It may be that they do agree, but they're afraid to say so. And that made a big difference to me because I always thought when there was silence in the room, it was negative. It's just that other people are too scared to say what you're saying. So you, I think the whole thing about confidence is really important. And the fact that I haven't got any teeth in <laughs> has hampered my delivery, probably. But I'm no, it's perfectly. It's it, I can hear everything. I don't think you need any. Uh, I'm going to take my teeth out and and try uh, next time. <laughs>